سنلاحقهم أينما ذهبوا سنقتادهم بإذن الله عبيدا كالكلاب فلقد بدأنا بك وسننتهي إلى البيت الأبيض المزعوم وسنجعله أسودا من نيراننا بإذن الله تعالى We will come to you with our weapons and explosives You will not have safety even in the bedroom of your houses You know we play by the rules, they don't play by the rules We're not going to have too many victories Little do you know that Obama and the leaders of our church have a secret, sinister pact to hide from the public the most terrible warning encrypted inside our Holy Bible, the only prophecy that has remained obscured under thick veils to this day. Because according to the final chapters of the Bible, Obama will not finish his second term. He is the 44th and last president of the U.S. And our country and every American citizen are about to face their greatest bedevilment. From an enemy fiercer and more powerful than ISIS, Al-Qaeda, North Korea, and Iran combined, right now only a handful of church leaders know the true meaning of this biblical prophecy, and they swore a blood oath to take this sacred secret to their graves. Because if this leaks out, it will cause panic among all faithful followers of the words of our Lord. Obama himself is unaware of the extent of the massacre that is to come, and there is nothing anyone can do to prevent this from happening. This ancient prophecy is coded within the visions of four men. These four evangelists are John the Apostle, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. They were chosen to give a very precise and terrifying warning of things to come in the end of times. This prophecy will fulfill the act of God, and the world as we know it will perish in flames. Therefore, before going any further, I must warn you, what you are about to see is deeply disturbing, because it will link current events to ancient biblical prophecies step by step. Once you discover the chilling evidence of the words of our Lord coming true, there is no turning back. It is a revelation so powerful when you see the biblical evidence that this great, unavoidable ruination will come to reality. It will simply be impossible for you to go about your daily life like you used to before knowing the truth. And it all starts with one simple question. Does it not seem odd to you that America, the richest and most powerful country today, the only country who has liberated other nations from evil, the greatest evangelical nation on the earth, is not even mentioned in the Bible? After all, as we know it, the Bible accurately predicts so many other historical events. The two world wars, man reaching outer space, and the return of the Jews to their homeland after centuries of exile. All of these events were seen and described by the prophets in their writings. America played the key role in all of this, yet the church does not teach America's place in the Bible, and there is a very good reason for that. One which I will reveal in a few moments. I will show you exactly why this knowledge is a closely guarded secret, and you will see that we are getting closer and closer to fulfilling this ancient prophecy, as the world leaders and their armies are covertly maneuvered into place, in preparation for the events that lead to the second coming of our Lord. Most importantly, you will see the exact reason why this prophecy will come true before the 1st of January, 2017, and you will know God's wrath will bestow upon our lands with great vengeance. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Luke 12, 5. 
The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Against them he will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. 1 Samuel 2.10 But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John 20.31 As it is God's will that you are here now, witnessing the unmasking of evil, it is the will of our Lord and Savior that you and your family see this and be saved from all the wrongdoings of our times. Just as the Holy Word says, I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16.33 But before we go any further, you need to know just who I am and how I came into the position of revealing such shocking facts. My name is Nathan Shepherd. I have been a fervent Christian ever since I was a child. I have put my life in the service of God committing my time to the study of archaeology and theology, and I have given 17 years of my life to studying the ancient scriptures. As a pastor and teacher to one of the largest universities in New Haven, Connecticut, using my worldly doctor's degree in theology and the history of religions to save our nation's lost souls. Once I received illumination about the place of the United States in Bible prophecy. Before making this video, I taught for four years the master class for methods of scientific research in religion, preparation, challenges, and possible solutions. Until one day, by divine providence, I made a startling discovery that connected all the hidden clues. You must understand, the holy texts of the Bible are full of metaphors and symbolism because the prophets try to describe things that exist in the future using words available in their time. So when the prophets saw airplanes in their visions, the description would be, mount up to heaven, referring to air travel and the air force, just like, it will ascend above the heights of the clouds, it will be like the most high, is clearly a metaphor for reaching space. The fact that both of these metaphors refer to the nation known to the Bible scholars as Babylon or Mystery Babylon is no coincidence. Mystery Babylon is an end times nation. How else would it be able to have an air force and reach space? And it is described in great detail by John the Apostle in the book of Revelation and by the prophets Jeremiah and Isaiah. Holy men who have heard the word of God and carefully put in writing to save our lost souls when the tribulation day comes. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10 Through the account of John the Apostle in the book of Revelation and through the writings of the prophets Jeremiah and Isaiah, Babylon is hailed as a queen among nations and the lady of kingdoms. Isaiah 47.5.7 it is the youngest and only superpower in the world. Jeremiah 47, Revelations 18. According to the prophets, Babylon reigneth over the kings of the earth. Revelation 17, 18. It was the praise of the entire earth and an astonishment among the nations. Jeremiah 51, 47. Babylon is a democracy weighed down by its huge government. Thou art weary in the multitude of thy councils. Babylon destroys her own land with pollution and waste, because thou hast destroyed thy land. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Ask yourself this, how could an early day prophet know about pollution since there is no such thing in ancient times? The answer may be already obvious. Babylon has the most powerful military force on the planet and is called the hammer of the whole earth. The merchants of the world are made rich through trading with this nation, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Is it starting to look like they are telling us about the United States of America? The portraiture gets even more specific from now on. Babylon is praised in the entire world. How is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How has Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? This is a coastal nation with deep water ports and much international trade. And every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, bear in mind that ancient Babylon 
current day Iraq has very limited access to the sea. Babylon has a unique and remarkable beginning, different from other nations and has been awe-inspiring from its birth. The U.S. is the first country to successfully become independent from a colonial empire, the British Empire. We speak the English language and we are the descendants of the first British colonies. That is why England is like a mother to the U.S. It fits perfectly with the description in Jeremiah 50, 12. More so, the mother of Babylon has the symbol of the lion. The royal symbol of England is a lion. And the mother of Babylon, in the end times, will be a state of major decline as the end nears. The British Empire that ruled the earth for 200 years is no more. Most of its colonies are independent. The British pound is no longer the world reserve currency. It has been replaced by the dollar. The currency of its daughter, the prophets also foretold that Babylon becomes proud and arrogant and does not consider its end. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasure, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I said a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Does this sound like American exceptionalism? The strong belief rooted inside our people that America is different from other nations, better than them in every possible way. Even the name Mystery Babylon is deeply symbolic. It's a mystery because the prophets, at the time of the visions, didn't know of the existence of the North American continent. They literally had no idea what they were actually seeing and described it as best as they could. And in ancient times, Babylon was the greatest city in the world, just like the U.S. is the greatest country in the world today. Ancient Babylon was constructed by people that came from all parts of the ancient world, what we may call today immigrants, just like the United States. This is, again, very, very precise. What about the personification of Babylon in the scriptures as a woman? The prophets used the word her. This is another very precise clue given to us through metaphors and symbolism that are so abundant in the holy book. So I tell you this, what is the most widely known symbol of America? What is the image most immigrants and tourists associate with the U.S.? Is it a woman symbolizing liberty that sits in the harbor of the most important city in the United States? This is very cryptic but important as it shows how accurate the prophecy is. The prophets talk about the U.S. by using its most recognizable monument, the Statue of Liberty. So why on earth are they also calling it the Whore of Babylon? You know, the sculptor of the Statue of Liberty was Auguste Bertoldi. He was a mason belonging to the great Masonic Lodge in Paris. Before beginning the Statue of Liberty project, Bertoldi was already seeking a commission to construct a giant statue of the goddess of fertility, Isis, as it was known to the Egyptians, or Ishtar, as it was known to the ancient Babylonians. Well, the Romans also adopted this fertility goddess, but they changed the name to Libertas in Latin, or Liberty in English, of course. Libertas is the mythological equivalent of Isis or Ishtar. Therefore, the Statue of Liberty is also the statue of Isis, or as the Babylons called her, Ishtar, the goddess of fertility, love, and sex. According to the ancient pagan rituals, one could only be purified of a sin after intercourse with a temple priest or priestess of Ishtar. In order for this salvation, a gift offering was needed. Ishtar was the patron mother of the temple priestesses and priests. She was the mother of what we would call today prostitution. This is why Ishtar was seen by early Christendom as the whore of Babylon. And that is why the Statue of Liberty, the symbol of America, is called by the prophets as the whore of Babylon.